Today, we're talking about something called tree data structures. Don't worry, it's just a fancy name for a super useful thing in coding. Before we jump in, hit that subscribe button below and join our family. Ready to climb this tree of knowledge? Let's go. Okay, so what's this tree thingy in coding? Think about a big tree in a park. It's got roots, a trunk, and lots of branches with leaves, right? In the computer world, we have something kind of like that, but instead of leaves, we call them nodes. These nodes are like little baskets where we can keep our toys, or in our case, information. Now imagine a tree. Not the one with leaves, but a coding tree. It's made up of several key parts, and understanding each one is crucial. Let's take a closer look. First up, we've got the node, basic unit of our tree. Think of it as a container that holds two things. A value, which is the data we're interested in, and pointers, which are like arrows, that direct us to other nodes in the tree. Every spot where you see a value in our tree diagram, that's a node. Next, let's talk about edges. An edge is the connection between one node and another. It represents the relationship in a tree, like the bond between a parent and its child. Without edges, we wouldn't have a tree, just a bunch of unconnected nodes. Now let's look up all the way to the root node. At the top of our tree, there's a special node called the root. It's the starting point, the first node from where all other nodes branch out. There's only one root in a tree, and it doesn't have a parent. Speaking of family, let's talk about parent and child nodes. Here's where the family analogy comes in. Any node that has other nodes branching from it is called a parent node. The nodes that come from it are its child nodes. Just like in a family, a child node can become a parent node too if it has nodes extending from it. Oh, and let's not forget about siblings. Nodes that share the same parent node are called siblings, similar to brothers and sisters. They're on the same level in our tree. As we reach the ends of our tree, we find the leaf nodes. When you reach a node that doesn't have any children, you've found what we call a leaf node. Just like the leaves on a real tree, these are at the ends and don't support any further growth. The next one is subtree. If you pick any node and look at it with all the nodes that come after it, that's a subtree. Subtrees are useful because they're trees within themselves, with their own structure and properties. And who came before our node? Its ancestors. These are the nodes that came before it, all the way up to the root node. Think of it as climbing your family tree, node by node, back to the origin. Trees have levels. And no, we're not talking about difficulty levels in a video game. We're talking about the layers in our tree. Our root node sits at level 0, and its direct children are at level 1. As we move down the tree, the level numbers go up. Lastly, let's measure the height of our tree. No ladders needed. The height is the longest journey you can take from the root down to a leaf node. It's the measure of how tall our tree has grown, and it tells us the maximum number of steps you'd take if you were to slide down from the top of the tree to the very bottom. Now that you've got the lay of the land with the basic components of a tree structure, Let's branch out into the different types of trees you'll encounter in the data structure forest. And in this forest, the most common type of tree you'll come across is the binary tree. So, what makes a binary tree special? It's all about the rule of two. Each parent node can have no more than two children. Simple, right? But wait, just like the natural world, binary trees come in various shapes and sizes, each with its own unique characteristics. First up is the full binary tree. This is the tree that doesn't believe in half measures. Every node has either two children or none at all. It's like a family where every couple decides to have exactly two kids or none. Next in line is the complete binary tree. This tree fills up from left to right, making sure there are no gaps in each level before moving on to the next. Imagine a parking lot that fills up row by row. That's your complete binary tree. Then we have the perfect binary tree, the model family of the binary tree world. It's perfectly balanced, with all leaf nodes at the same level, and all parent nodes proudly boasting two children each. If it were a building, it'd be perfectly symmetrical from the ground up. But what about a tree that's just trying to stay balanced? That's where the balanced binary tree comes in. It's not perfect, but it tries to keep its leaves at roughly the same level, to avoid any side getting too heavy. Think of it as a well-organized shelf, where the weight is distributed evenly enough to not tip over. 
And on the other end of the spectrum, we have the degenerate tree, or as I like to call it, the slacker tree. It's when each parent node has only one child, making it look more like a linked list than a tree. It's like a family tree where every generation has only one child. Now, let's take a turn into a more specialized neighborhood, the binary search tree, or BST for short. BSTs are all about order. They make searching for values swift and efficient. In a BST, all the nodes to the left of a parent are smaller, and all nodes to the right are larger. It's like a filing system where everything's sorted from smallest to largest for quick access. But even within BSTs, there's a desire for balance. That's where self-balanced BSTs come into play. These trees automatically keep themselves balanced during insertions and deletions to ensure operations stay efficient. It's like an automatic organizing system that keeps your files in perfect order no matter how many you add or remove. And a shining example of this is the red-black tree, a self-balancing BST that follows specific rules to ensure the tree remains balanced after every insertion and deletion. The name comes from the color coding of the nodes, which is an integral part of how the tree maintains its balance. Think of it as a traffic light system that regulates the flow of data to maintain speed and efficiency. And there you have it, a quick tour of the forest of tree data structures. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our latest videos.